Welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to look at the basics of using hash tables. So if we jump over here, we can see that we've already set up this little variable. Um, and we're going to create a new hash table and put it in this global variable h0. So we've done that. We'll jump over to the REPL and we've got h0. And we can see that this hash table has a count of zero, which means there's nothing in it. Um, regardless, we're going to try and get something out of it. So let's try and get hash foo of h0. Um, notice that it returns two values. If you haven't worked with multiple values yet, then check my other videos out on multiple value bind and things like this. Um, but yes, in common list, we can return multiple values. And from get hash, the first one is going to be the thing that was found in the hash table for the key foo. And the second thing is either going to be nil or true, telling you if there was something there. And that's an interesting point because so here we um, we have an empty hash table and we tried to get foo out of it. So it returned nil because there was no value. And then it told us that there was no value in the hash table. Well, let's put something in. Let's say setf get hash foo is nil, right? And now we'll do that get again. Notice that this time we get nil back, but it returns the second value is true because the, the key foo is in the hash table, but the value that's associated with it was the value nil. So that's a little bit weird, but let's have a look at the hash table again and we can see that it has a count of one. And if I inspect it, do h0, we can see inside our hash table here, count of one, and its contents is foo equals nil. So that's cool. So I am going to set foo to something else now. Let's go back and set foo to 10. And now we're going to do a get hash again of foo on the hash table. Notice this time we get 10 back, and once again we get t letting us know, yes, there was a value there. Um, and let's inspect the hash table h0 again. And we can see this time foo equals 10. In fact, what I'll do, I'll probably bring the code up here and I'll leave this hash table inspector here so we can keep an eye on things as we make changes. All right, so we've, we've seen, um, so far we've been modifying the value for the same key. So let's put in bar now. So we're gonna go setf bar. 20. Come back to our little hash table and have a look. Now we can see that foo is 10 and bar is 20. Notice the order isn't maintained. Hash tables don't guarantee an order. They just keep these associations between values, between keys and values. And that's what we're going to be working with. Now, how about if we wanted to remove something um, from here? So we've seen putting things in, we've seen updating things using setf. Um, how about if we wanted to remove something entirely? Um, for that, we use remhash. Remhash is going to take a key. In this case, let's remove foo. And a hash table, h0. See, return true to say that there was a value there. And we check in the inspector. And now we can see that this hash table only contains bar. And if we come over here and say h0, we can see the count is 1, which lines up with what we're seeing in the inspector, which is excellent. Let's go and put foo back in. In fact, I, I want to show one thing again. Let's set foo to be nil. And what was the thing I wanted to show here? Yes. The difference, once again, if we do get hash of foo in h0, notice we get nil and t. And now we're going to ram hash foo from h0 and try and get it again. Nil t originally, nil nil now. This one says it was in the hash table and the value was nil. This is it wasn't in the hash table, so the value is nil. All right, probably belaboring the point, but it's good to see regardless. Let's set foo back to 10. Let's check on our inspector that bar is 20, foo is 10. And now we want to clear the entire hash table, which we do with CLR hash. Um, so we pass in the hash table like this, Bam, check the hash table, it's now empty. And it returned the hash table and you can see it has a count of zero. Be aware this isn't like some of the other functional things that we've been doing with con cells and all this stuff. This is mutating that value. So anyone that's holding onto the hash table is gonna see that you've removed that stuff. Um, 
Yes. One last very important point. Um, there is there's actually quite a bit more to a hash table. We won't try and dive into everything in the first lesson. Um, but one important point is that when you're creating a hash table, you can specify a test and it defaults to equal in this EQL. If you want to see the different kinds of equality functions, check out my um, episode on that. But this means something rather interesting. This means that when we're comparing keys, we compare to see if they are EQ, which means um, they're the same thing in memory, or if they're equal um, an exact number. So it is if we were using the equals sign for comparison. So EQL checks if it's the same thing or it's the same number. This has something rather interesting to it because we've been using symbols so far as our key names. What if we started doing something a little different? What if we started using strings um, for our keys? So we're going to say foo here, and we're going to set foo to 10. Let's inspect that hash table. And now I'm going to write a string in a rather strange way. Um, actually, let's see if there's probably an easier way of doing it. Let's see if we can use copy sequence. All right. Things are getting a bit crowded here. Um, so let's bring things down to new lines a bit. Okay, so this time, uh, the first thing we did was we said, hey, in this hash table, the string foo is gonna map to 10, great. But then we copied that, so we get a new object, a completely different object in memory, and we say this one is going to be 20. If we come down to our hash table now, we see we got two entries, both which look like they have the same key. This is because our test function is EQL, right? These are different strings in memory, which means they're not the same under EQL. They would be under a different test. And so we don't often in um, common list, because we've got symbols, we don't normally use strings as keys, but if we want to, then we need to specify a different test here. Let's do the same thing, but we're gonna create a different hash table over here. And our test is gonna be equal, E-Q-U-A-L. And if you remember this, um, when given strings, we'll compare to see if the characters are the same in the strings. So we're going to go back and create our little problem, but we're going to write into h1 this time. So I'm just going to inspect h1. And we can see that we've got foo in there, and foo is 10. And now we're going to do this, where we copy the string foo to get a new foo. And we use that as the key in our hash table, and we inspect and... Oh, I just did it in the wrong one, sorry. Let's go and do it in H1. We come over here, and you can see now that foo equals 20. There are not two entries. So in H0, where the test was EQL, um, we had two foos mapping to different values because they were different. the keys were different under this test. But under EQUAL, under equal in this case, foo and any other string foo are going to be the same, and so we get this single pair. That can be quite a lot to take in in one go, so feel free to step back, rewatch the video, um, but these are the basics of hash tables, and we'll cover more in future videos. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in another little bit of Lisp.